Hi guys. Uh, Merry Christmas. It is currently um, a couple of days after Christmas, 2021, and I thought I would just show you how I made uh, the Wind in the Willows piece that I recently uploaded. Um, it's, uh, it's been very well received, and so usually when something does get, you know, does do well, I like to uh, show a little bit of how I, how I made it, uh, because I'm always interested, like, what made this successful? Because you know what it's like, you upload a piece, you make it a piece, you're working on it for weeks, or, well, not weeks, but maybe days, and uh, you you just don't know, you're like, is this good? I don't know, and then you upload it, and you cringe, and you just, uh, and then you, and then sometimes it does really well, and so, sometimes it's surprising, <laughs> and you find yourself thinking, okay, uh, I guess I did something right. This was one of those occasions. Um, the Wind in the Willows piece, as you can see uh, here, this one was my most successful piece of the year on Art Station, and you know it's the touchy subject of do we measure our success in likes? Uh, I don't know if that's the right way to go about things. It probably isn't. However, <laughs> that's what tends to be how I measure my success personally. Um, I, well, I, okay, if it does well on a few platforms, so uh, let's talk about that as well, because I always think it's important to talk about if a piece that you make is well received, because that's what we're here for, we're here to make art that people like, um, that's why I'm here to make art, and uh, sometimes we do not know whether the art that we're making is going to be nice, so uh, so with this piece, I uploaded it to ArtStation and, um, you know, Facebook, I don't have a big following on Facebook, but I also uploaded it to LinkedIn, and on LinkedIn, it did something like 10 times better than my most previous successful piece, therefore, I have to regard it as a success. Um, so, uh, yeah, and like I say, I'm always interested to know, like, I don't just make art, upload it and go, here's how I made this piece, I'm like... <laughs> Did it do well? Did, you know, is it is this piece gonna elevate me? Um, because each piece that you do, you hope it does, and in this case, it did. And this is a a, a good um, a good end to the year because my year has been pretty pretty bad. So anyway, let's um, let's get into let's get into this piece. So uh, when you know whenever you see a piece that's that's done well i mean I, whenever i see a piece that, that looks like it's uh, successful i always think okay well, what was the very very starting point i'm less interested in the last 50% of the painting i'm more interested more interested in the first like 5% because it's like when you make a painting it's like getting on a path and if you veer a small fraction of a percent from the path, you will eventually be way off the path. And uh, and the more I learn about art, the more I learn that it's in that very initial trajectory of when you set off. It's kind of like there's got to be a better analogy, like uh, sending a send, sending something off into space. You know, it has to be an exact trajectory because once it goes, it will just keep going in that in that direction. And if you're off, it will eventually be a large you'll be off by a large amount. And I keep finding that uh, you have to really drill down those first moments. So uh, it comes down to what is in your head? Uh, what's your intention? All those things um, before you even get into the sketch. So just to show you what my first, the first, um, I guess the first thing that I put down, I guess I was doing some research. So here's my Pure F. That I got, and it kept on being added to, uh, and it took a while. So, um, so we've got like tree research. Um, first, I was thinking, well, okay, you know, I'll do. It. Well, okay, let's go back even further. So, last Christmas, I did a wind in the willows piece, and um, it also it was successful. And I thought, why don't I do another wind in the willows piece this time? Uh, another, you know, some trees and some snow, Christmassy. Uh, this kind of thing over here was kind of what was inspiring me. So I guess the impetus was something like this. It had to be snowy, Christmassy, cosy. And I made some notes here. So uh, first thing I wrote down was cosy. Um, 
and, it, and I may, maybe thought it could be architectural. Um, I wasn't sure. Some of these are actual human dwellings. Um, there's this nice cathedral one. I wasn't sure. Uh, could be a cozy interior. Uh, cottages village. I guess I deviated from that. Um, outside versus inside. The sort of like the snow, warm inside. Um, so, and then I was looking at other paintings there. So this is the one that I made last year. Um, and these are similar paintings that I liked that had snow in. Nice warm interior, cool exterior. And nice trees. And I liked this palette. I really did set out and I f kind of felt like I would eventually deviate, which I did. But I like this palette. I like the the neutrals and then the really intense warm, but I eventually ended up going for a little bit more of a blue than a neutral. Um, then I looked at different kinds of trees, and then I was looking for snow trees in the snow, but I wasn't getting many places. And I also because I wanted to also see what it was like for any nighttime scenes or something like that, and I wasn't really getting anywhere. There was just like forests full of or woodlands full of trees so I instead went to paintings where I found a lot of good stuff and I found these guys um, the, the the exact name escapes me um, something ah, I can't remember I don't want to butcher his name but um, there were some great results here for tree research and I was using this looking at how snow falls on trees this way. I was really liking the geometry of the snow here and here. I I really wanted to go for kind of this but I guess I didn't in the end. Um, but uh, that didn't inspire me a bit. Uh, this is It's easier to kind of show snow in uh, direct sunlight um, when it gets a bit overcast uh, you lose a bit of the dimensionality. And this tree here, this tree was a big inspiration too. I uh, really loved the zigzag and the way that the snow was hitting it at an angle and there were some good shapes there. So with that in mind, the first sketch that I did was kind of inspired by this. I thought, well, what if there was a, a house built into a tree and we were looking at... So the first sketch that I did was kind of like this. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was that one. And as soon as I did that, I was like, eh. I don't really like the way that this is going, as you can see, very loose. And then I went to here, um, and wasn't too pleased with that. I mean, it maybe it could have had some potential. Um, did I put any perspective grids on these? I didn't. Maybe this one I decided to... But then the actual finished piece started out like this. And it was, I think it was maybe even a landscape. Um, and I had this idea that there would be a rat character here and that he would be in this tree that was quite a posh kind of house with and I thought maybe this could be like a nice big arch window here or something like that uh, like, a, um, like a kind of a grand stately home set inside a tree something like that and I then just expanded the canvas uh, vertically. So we ended up going up like that. Um, and then, well, we've got to like here eventually. So we have this zigzag kind of thing. And the architectural pieces, and then the, the woodlands on the outside. And then I refined that sketch to this. And so what I was also looking at, so besides this reference, where I was then starting to lean onto this shape here, uh, just on the snow. So I looked at this tutorial by Evan Amundsen, and uh, looked, it was pretty useful. Uh, I'll show you what he's got here. This is on YouTube, on his YouTube channel. So it's interesting to sort of break this down, how he works. Because uh, I was kind of, I guess I was using a similar method. He started out, I mean, look at how he starts out. I mean, it's completely 
as loose as you can imagine. Go to there, throws in some lines. Then he tries something else. This is what he tends to do, is he'll really try this, try that, try this, and until he finds something. Which is refreshing because um, sometimes you see people just hitting it first time. But he, he really does tend to find, uh, just really explore and, and just keep changing it and changing it until he likes it. So then we go to here, Ooh, then, he, then he's doing some studies, I think. He'll do that as well, which is interesting. Let's see, what is this? What was that? Oh, I don't even know what that is. I think it's completely irrelevant. <laughs> but then he will try this, and then he'll get some photos, he'll do a study, he'll even do a color study. It's crazy. And then we start on the final piece in lines, and then refining it. Then he'll uh, separate out the um, foreground, middle ground, background, or whatever. Then underpainting. Then start painting away. See all the the occlusions going in. And then he just does his magic. So I was kind of using that loose method of going in from line work and then refining it. And here I have the um, the process. So that's phase one, and then I did a little bit of a value study and thought I need to refine it more before I go to a full value study. So I find it, and that was the value study. Um, and I didn't stick to this completely by the end because I was really trying to fine tune all this, uh, which is why it's good to do these value studies and have different layers because you can, you can like bring this down, pull this up, pull this down constantly, get it to the right. Uh, uh, sort of tones between the, this and this and this, and it was always tweaking, uh, you know, as I was going along. Uh, so then I start off by putting in a basic um, block of color, getting the local value of the tree, the local value of the snow, um, and then and then what I've been doing lately is um, instead of just having the lines on a separate layer painting underneath once I feel I've got it roughly there I'll merge the lines onto the actual paint layer um, because it's kind of quicker uh, rather than like because you know you paint under here you will create a rough squiggly line underneath your actual line and the actual line is hiding some of the mistakes that you're making so I'll kind of merge it down so that it's all on one layer and I don't have to constantly flick between the two. And uh, as I've progressed over the years in digital painting, I've learned that one of the one of the secrets to um, to working well is using as few layers as possible. So if you can just be keeping on one layer where possible, you can work on another layer, here's the thing. Don't then just work on top of your main layer. Uh, you can work on a layer above for a bit and then flatten it down, but always be flattening down as opposed to keeping a thousand layers like I used to. Um, eventually, though, when you get when you get to the point where it's tight and you're happy with it, you'll probably then actually start to be comfortable having a few more layers because you do need, you know, he has to be on the, his own layer, he has to be on, on his own and him, and this tree does and these background trees too. So you can layer it that way. But this whole area of the tree ideally should be on one layer just, just so that you can get a nice flow going. It's not about necessarily being fast. It's about making quick decisions intuitively. So uh, as you can see the lines are starting to erase. And working on the values here, see that was lighter and that was darker. I need, you know, you have to have light on dark, dark on light. So I'm making sure that this reads against that. Okay, and then when that goes darker again, so it goes from here, darker, darker. 
And at this point, I thought, ah, what if there was a warm light coming in here? It was hard, getting hard to define the snow, you see, with it not having a direct light source. Um, I was thinking, how am I going to, how am I going to show the three dimensionality of this snow without much lighting? Um, that was a challenge, and it was just about lots of subtle gradations within the bluey white. So this is in a recess, so it's darker, lighter, lighter, lighter. And this is darker, and this is lighter. Then the warm helps highlight at least the snow from this side. This helps as well. A um, bit of snow on the trees, and so here is where we're going to our reference. How does snow look like look like when it's falling on trees? And I kept on referring to this here for this. And I was so the other thing, one of the other reasons why I think this is successful is the shape language. We have this really nice uh, zig, zag, zig, zag, and that kind of thing. So it's very geometric. Uh, this line, these these uh, parallel shapes here, and this shape they're all leaning in the same angle, but then this is going the opposite way. So uh, and then this shadow here. So we've got this nice repeatable pattern. It's not just chaotic. Uh, these little bits here to define the the zigzags further were actually inspired by um, one of these. Let's see if we can find it. This one here. I just looked at these shapes and I thought, yeah, that look. Um, this is pretty. I mean, here there's not very very much direct light, but it looks dimensional. So I actually like copied and pasted this right next to where I was working, and sort of used it like the reference was right right here and I was painting away here and looking at it and thinking okay because uh, it really helps when you're creating random shapes and these are just completely random shapes it just really helps to have something to look at even though uh, this isn't a photograph it's a painting it works well as reference um, and then trying to just detail up the snow And then it went. I decided to go war like cooler and warmer at the same time. Well, boost up the saturation really, um, because I wasn't. I just wasn't quite feeling the neutrals. So we went for a bit of a blue, and then it helps to define the forms because we have this warm here, and we're creating a little bit of cast shadow. It's really good if you can find any excuses to make cast shadows just really make something come to life further defining this path here. Now um, in terms of like knowing if a piece is working or not, that's the other thing. At a certain point early on I was like, ah, I don't know if this is going to work and um, by about this stage here kind of I could tell that it was going to be um, quite successful, or not successful, I don't think that's the right word, but well successful in the gen most general sense like I would be happy with it, <clears throat> and I wouldn't think that it was a, a rubbish painting. Um, one thing that I've noticed lately is a strange one, but you know how you're supposed to stand away from a painting or shrink it down? Well, I find I kind of know if a painting is going to be good if I step away from my monitor and look at it from an angle, like a oblique angle, so that it's, um, rather than in front of me, it's to the side and compressed in its angle. And for some reason, I can I can see that that's working, and I can't really articulate why. Um, but it just seems like all of the the painting just gets a bit condensed, and it's weird because you know some people flip their paintings upside down and flip them this way and that way, and um, that's perhaps one of the ways to see it from a fresh angle or something like that. Um, Okay, just ref again, just going in and just fine tuning some of these painting, uh, painting pieces, um, defining the form of this tree. I felt like it was just empty on the side. Observing like how snow works, like there's not snow like gathering under here, and I liked how this was wrapping around this form. Um, I think that's another um, a good feature of the painting processes that making the snow look believable 
making the forms look three-dimensional and uh, finding excuses to make things look three-dimensional so I think this here worked really well and I was starting to use like a little brush um, I wonder if I can zoom in so this is the final painting uh, this is a bit of a sharpen filter and I was using like a a brush that was a bit splattery to eat into the snow so that it looked like it was going from thick to thin and like spreading out here and then uh, the same brush with white on it uh, to spray like little bits of um, frosting here and there little bits here and then of course I did like a layer of snow falling that um, helps to sort of sell the, the sort of magical feeling which is here then we're starting on the actual architecture now which I was a bit nervous about I wasn't sure how how I was going to represent this because it's such a tiny space and uh, I didn't have much room to work I thought I was gonna to have to detail it up but I, it kind of turns out that less was more in this case it made the character stand out more so then I started to um, define some of these areas here and then Ratty and he's got his like mug of warm drink here which I thought was like a nice way to uh, describe the warm interior and his friends are coming over to visit and he's greeting them with some mulled wine or I don't know, do rats drink coffee? But do rats wear sweaters? <laughs> I don't know. Um, and then just, uh, and I usually, I'm usually a bit apprehensive about my character work because I'm not strong with it. So I leave these guys to last. And but they came together quite quickly. Once you get a, a good silhouette, that's I think half the struggle with doing characters if you're not very strong with characters is just getting a silhouette right. Um, and that was already mainly done in the first pass. And then onto this guy, just tweaked his pose a little bit. Not, not brilliant. Um, in terms of I, I'm just, I just struggle with garments and clothing and things like that. And I just have to draw upon, I don't know, a bit of reference um, and a bit of luck. So that is the so that that's the finished painting. Let's have a zoomy zoom. Uh, the resolution was which I think sometimes it's important to get an idea of that it says it's 8,000 wide but that's because oh well I guess I could talk about this I have my uh, reference and my inspiration over to one side it's important to have I think to have your your reference right in front of you when you're working and not just on another I mean because I don't know if it's on another monitor maybe but um, it shouldn't just be like shrunk down here, you know, because as soon as you look at it, you'll forget about it. Um, have it close by, and then if you're really like struggling to use the reference loosely and you need to just have it right there to like copy it closely, you need to have it right next to the thing that you're painting. <clears throat> so, yeah. So the actual resolution is mainly more important to talk about the height, which is six and a half thousand. I do intend to uh, sell this as a print as well, so I want as much height as I can. But uh, usually, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of better to go for more of an eight thousand if you want to print it. But um, I didn't with this one. So there's the inspiration folder with all the different bits and pieces. Um, yeah, things like that. Yeah. Sure, yes. Um, what else is there? I think that's about it. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So it was, um, it was a, it was quite enjoyable to do. It's fun sort of getting into the snow and like, you can really get in there and, um, be sort of creative with how the snow falls and all that kind of stuff but um, it's also good to get away from 3D I keep talking about that um, it's I couldn't like if you're always if you're always thinking okay I've got to start in 3D now 
I couldn't do this. And this is what's important about starting with uh, your sketches. Um, you can get an idea down and go, mm, that's not working very, very quickly. Um, and so yeah, the initial sketch was super like messy and you can just let your ideas out, try things. Sometimes it's hard to, the difficulty is you can't quite tell. There's a bit of a leap or a gap between the sketch <clears throat> and then what it's going to look like. So you you have to develop a sort of intuition for, okay, this sketch probably will work. Um, and it helps once you get like that value sketch. Um, in the beginning, so you should develop the ability to say, okay, this could work at this stage once it's painted, because sometimes you just don't know and then you end up painting it and then halfway through you realize it's not going to work. Um, and that just takes a lot of experience really. Um, and I wasn't 100% confident at this stage, but it was, I kind of was pushed for time. It was, I wanted to get this out by Christmas and I just about made it. But I didn't have time to to keep exploring. And the funny thing is, and this is what is a mystery, what if I'd have kept exploring and I'd have come up with a worse idea? And that's the, uh, that is the mystery. Um, so there we have it. I hope you got something out of this. And uh, hit me up with any questions in the comments. And like and subscribe. And thank you. And I'll see you again.